Even though there's still snow on the ground, I've noticed lately that the days are getting longer. Even the spring bulbs are beginning to peek through the soil. We're about a month away from the first day of spring. and In my zone 6B, we're about two months out from the last frost date. This is the time to begin planning for the spring garden. Each season of growing offers a learning opportunity. Gardening is a series of experiments and what works one season may not work the next. The one thing that's a constant is that with each failure, we learn a lesson and that is reason enough to keep trying. And you may even get something yummy to eat out of it. Tonight we're in my kitchen and I'm starting the process of planning my spring garden. I decided that I would journal my garden progress this year so that I would be able to look back on these videos and see um, what I grew, what did well, and what didn't. Hey friends, so I'm getting ready to um, rip out these snap peas. There's a few more so I'm going to pull them off um, and I'm going to get these vines out of here and I'm going to plant my green beans. So these sprouted in like three or four days. These things are maybe a week old um, and they look really good. So I'm gonna replace those. This is the rest of my spring garden here. Um, I have some collard greens, some cabbages that are starting to form heads. Um, my mom took a bunch of the collards this weekend and some kale and she put them in some soup. Um, my Swiss chard is still looking really good. Um, the Brussels sprouts, something's eating on them, but I don't care if the leaves get damaged because the Brussels sprouts will form up a, uh, along the stem. So I have two Brussels sprouts here and another cabbage over there and my carrots. The first thing that I'm going to discuss is um, why I've decided to not do any indoor seeds starting this year. Um, two reasons. The first reason is that the indoor seed starting requires too much space. And I just don't want to dedicate any indoor space to seed starting this year. Uh, secondly is the amount of time that it takes to care for those seedlings. And um, I decided that I wanted a more hands-off approach. And so this year I've opted to start my seeds via the winter sowing method, which I made a video about um, a week ago. I sowed my first batch of seeds, including my spring cool weather crops. So I'll link that here. And the other method is going to be direct sow. So the direct sow method is simply the process of taking your seeds and planting them or sowing them directly in the soil. Now, each region has what's called a last frost date. And this is the tentative last date where you might be expected to get a frost. Now, this isn't concrete. It's very possible that you would get a frost um, you know, once that date passes. But it's generally a good date where you can start planning, planting your spring crops. I started uh, a number of crops, cool weather crops, about a uh, week ago, like I said, through my um, winter sowing method. I sowed some varieties of broccoli, some cabbage, some collards, kale, and Brussels sprouts. And recently I picked up some cauliflower. So I plan on sowing some of those as well. And today, I'm gonna to show you what I plan on sowing via the direct sow method. The first thing that I'm going to sow um, is going to be snap peas, sugar snap peas. These are delicious, they're a great garden snack, and they're very easy to grow, and so I plan on direct sowing those. The next thing that I will um, direct sow are my root crops. And those are going to be radishes, beets, and two varieties of carrots, this kaleidoscope and this chardonnay type. The greens that I'm going to grow are going to be bok choy, spinach, and this rainbow Swiss chard. Herbs is cilantro and salad greens. So these are all very easy to grow. Um, if I had to say that there was one group of vegetables that uh, for spring that I have the most difficulty with um, in cool weather crops, that would be the brassicas. And brassicas consist of things like broccoli and cabbage and cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts. 
The reason I've had trouble with those in the past um, is there are two reasons and they're pests. Um, the cabbage moth, which is this little white butterfly, as well as the um, cabbage worm, which is a little green looking worm caterpillar thing. And there are ways to prevent that, but in the past I haven't been good about covering those crops. So what I plan to do differently this year is when I put out those crops, I'm going to cover them. Um, you can cover them with some kind of tool um, that you can get at a fabric store. You can also go online and just buy some um, coverings uh, that are breathable. They're actually called crop covers and they will still allow sunlight and um, water to get to your crops. So that's what I plan to do differently so that I can be more successful, hopefully, with the, um, the brassicas. The other veggie, cool weather veggie, that has given me um, a little bit of trouble in the past are beets. Um, I've had some trouble with beets, mostly just not them not developing. So root crops can be a little tricky. They need the soil to be nice and loose and to be rich in um, organic material. So you can amend your soil. Amending just means to add uh, components to your soil, such as um, compost, uh, peat moss, and fertilizer, you know, organic fertilizers that will help provide nutrients to your crops so that they can have proper root development. Um, bone meal is great for root development. So you can plant that in the uh, soil, work that in before you throw your seeds down. For beets, I actually, you know, haven't had luck with them in the past, but last season I did have some success. And what I did was I used uh, a Charles Dowding's method of just putting the seeds in, but not thinning them, just letting the beets kind of grow and, you know, they just kind of grow beside each other and start like pushing each other up through the soil. It's actually really cool, but it's almost like they make their own space kind of thing, but it worked out really well. And so I plan on doing that again this year. Carrots are also, um, they can be tricky, although I have been successful growing carrots. It took quite a few tries for me to get there. Um, the challenges with growing carrots are that the seeds are very small, so it makes it difficult to sow them thinly. Um, so you do have to go back in after they sprout and take some out so that your carrots will have enough room to grow. Um, also, the soil should be loose so that your carrots can grow nice and long um, and have a carrot shape and not get all uh, distorted. Um, I'll pop some pictures in of some carrots that I've grown in the past. The greens category is very easy to grow. Um, they simple spinach swiss chard swiss chard overwinters in my area pretty well um, i still had swiss chard up until a few weeks ago when we started getting some really hard frosts um, and salad greens i love to plant salad greens that are cut and come again varieties that just means that you cut the leaves off you put them in your salad bowl and you leave the roots of the salad or the lettuce in place and they will keep growing leaves for you so it's um it's a good way to keep your lettuce going. Uh, so based on my last frost date of April 18th, I plan on, what I did was I looked at the calendar and I counted six weeks back. And six weeks back from April 18th for 2022 lands me at March 8th. And so I'm gonna plan on planting these all on March 8th. Now, is this right? I'm not sure, but I'm a gardener that kind of just <laughs> does what I feel is right. I just kind of grab my seed packets and when I think that it's safe enough, I'll just go out there and start planting. My grandmother, or my vovó, which is grandmother in Portuguese, she actually, um, she was a gardener and she's actually the person who instilled the love of gardening in me. And any time that I think of Cosmos, which is a flower, uh, an annual, um, I think of my grandmother because she planted those every year. And um, so, March 8th happens to be her birthday, so I thought it would be a perfect, it's six weeks back from the uh, last frost date, and um, and it's her birthday. So I thought it would be a great day for me to commemorate her and to plant my cool weather crops that I plan on direct sowing. So that is it, friends. Um, I hope that you've already started planning your spring garden. If you have any tips or tricks for me um, that you've used in the past that have caused you some success or some, you know, things that haven't worked so well when growing your brassicas or your root veggies, um, let's share them in the comments below and learn from each other. 
Um, I'll share a, a tip with you about radishes in closing. Um, radishes are super fun to grow because they only take 20 to 30 days from start to finish. So from the time that you plant your seed, within a month, you can have some radishes to eat. Now, I didn't like radishes before, but once I made them with um, a little bit of olive oil, some salt, pepper, and some garlic powder, and you roast them in the oven, chef's kiss. They're delicious. And they kind of um, are like a stand-in potato for people who might be on a low-carb diet. I'm not, but if you are, really good alternative to potatoes. And with these, because they're such short amount of time from seed to harvest, you can get a couple of succession plantings with these. And succession planting is just when you um, continually plant the same seed, you know, at regular intervals so that you always have a harvest ready. So when I plant these, two weeks later, I would plant another batch. And two weeks after that, another batch. So that by the time you're harvesting the first batch, your second batch is already on its way. So I figured I'd share that little tip for cooking radishes with you. So thank you again for joining me and um, hopefully you're on your way to planting your spring garden. We're only just about 30 days away from spring and I couldn't be more excited to get outside and get my hands in the dirt. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.